I'm sure we'll have a few more joining us, but for now, I'll say good morning, <coughs> happy election day, and what a beautiful weekend it's been, and I hope everyone's uh, started off to a great week. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, Puyallup is the proud host of the regional foodie event, the Culinary Classic, this weekend. Uh, kicks off with a winemaker's ball Friday night with Damon Heward talking about his passing time wine and Northwest Symphonietta playing as you arrive and dinner and dancing. And then Saturday will be our first ever brew all up. So paying homage to our hops heritage via craft beer festival out at uh, the showplex at the fairgrounds uh, with live music and about a hundred night market vendors. And then Sunday is a great uh, foodies and family culinary expo with some vendors and celebrity chef demos and just a lot of fun. So bring kids and family. So a big weekend ahead for Puyallup. We're excited. Good. All right. I bought, bought a little bit more time there for someone to, to pop on. So I'm just going to kick it off. Uh, welcome. And thanks again for being here as always. Very excited to have with us uh, council member Castama who has said the council in Puyallup has been up to really good things this year. And I'll tell you, that's what we're hearing as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let him provide us kind of a recap summary and, and maybe give us a little hint at what other kinds of things they're, they're looking at for 2022. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate this uh, very much. I, it's interesting you talk about all those events happening at Puyallup. We had a consultant. We hired a consultant to look at really the viability of downtown Puyallup becoming even more of a focal place for Eastern Pierce County. And that consultant came back with a, a really pretty um, flattering result saying that really Eastern Pierce County looks to Puyallup as its gathering place. They love to come here for the evenings, for the restaurants, for the park events. And you talk about Burella, Beer Allop, you talk about all these different kinds of events. People look upon Puyallup as that kind of gravitating place. Partly, I think it's a it's a fairly safe community for them to come into. I mean, we have our issues. There's no doubt about that. But relatively safe community, um, fair amount of parking. And I'll talk a little bit about that when they come to our downtown area. So it's very accessible. And, and I really believe that it's it's on the precipice of really taking off. I really do. But I would like to say this before I get into that, that I, I really am an advocate for the advocate for the business community being the driver of all of this. And I'm going to show you why. Um, I have this beautiful shred. OK, a shred is where you sit down and you talk about what you want for your community. OK, I have a beautiful shred for Puyallup here that goes into all different um, I mean, you should see the plans for downtown Puyallup. It's absolutely gorgeous, okay? And I showed this to community members. They were very impressed by it. And the date on it is 1982, okay? All of that work was done in 1982. Now, it doesn't stop there, okay? I've got another one here that goes through, and it is beautiful. I mean, downtown Puyallup, the plans for the boulevards, the parks, all of that is just gorgeous. This is 2005. The amount of people who put in efforts is just uh, amazing. Here's another one. This is for the actual storefronts going through and offering ways to redo the storefronts, 2008. So there are a lot of efforts out there. Oftentimes by government entities, they'll, they'll contract to have these um, these threats done. But my experience is, is the communities that really succeed, the ones that really push forward, the private sector is the one that looks at these plans and says, we're going to do these. And they're always reminding the elected officials because elected officials, basically every two years, because we have a new cycle coming in, the majority can change, priorities can change very quickly. Right now, we have a great economic development strategy for downtown Puyallup. We have Meredith Neal, who is a economic development director that we went ahead and hired to come in and implement that. Um, you know, it, 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 the 
chamber and business groups need to get behind that and make sure it's always in front of the council because there could be a different flavor of the month. There could be other things that come in and really take away from that or focus off the economic development strategy and plan. And it could become in that pile that I just put beside me here. So I want to thank you for what you do. Realize though that your role is extremely valuable in the future of Puyallup. Now, having said that, I, I do want to say this. The last three years, I believe, have been somewhat transformative for Puyallup, the way it's been managed. Puyallup, three years ago, we went ahead and hired Steve Kirkley. He's a recovering attorney, okay? But he, his whole point was is that he wanted to be an excellent manager and wanted to bring the best management practices, primarily from the private sector, but he wanted to bring them to the city of Puyallup. And I'll, I'll tell you how we did that. We trained 20 out of 320 employees. We have 20 green belt Six Sigma um, experts on staff. We have four Baldridge National Examiners. Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Awards is probably the highest quality awards out of the US Commerce Department. We have four of those individuals. Um, we hired a full-time strategic planning director, and we went all out to create a strategic plan in Puella that was balanced, that looked at four key areas, but had real performance measures, not like bogus, but I mean, real performance measures that made a difference. And the entire council got behind that. So those four areas, just so you know, they are a vibrant economy, and I'll talk a little bit about that, safe community, which is pretty obvious, we need that, uh, a livable community, and that deals with parks, recreation, things of that sort. And finally, organizational excellence. In other words, how do we give the best uh, return on the investment for the tax dollars that the, um, the taxpayers give in Puella? And so we set out with that. We update this on a quarterly basis in front of the council. So it's very systematic. And then on a biannual basis with the new council, we come in we look at our goals and our objectives, and the council has to buy in or modify those objectives, those goals again. So we, we make it very relevant. There's the old joke, which um, I know you've all heard that if, um, if you want to hide an object where no one will ever find it, put it in your strategic plan, okay, and then put it on a shelf because no one will, because no one ever looks at a strategic plan after they've made it. We have built in a system on a quarterly basis where we review our strategic plan in front of the council. The public can see it. We can grill, you know, the administration. We can, you know, vet out performance measures, et cetera. So with that, let me get into the vibrant economy. And by the way, I want to leave time for questions. So I'm going to talk as fast as I possibly can. Okay. But, um, uh, vibrant economy. I know that all of you are probably very familiar with what we have done in downtown with the parklets, for example. We have about eight of those parklets. Those are where you extend the dining businesses out into the parking place um, in, the, in the downtown area. The idea is to give a greater intimacy, to give uh, also it does have a traffic calming uh, effect. Cars tend to slow down when the road is narrower like that. But those have been really fairly successful. They came about from COVID, but frankly, I was advocating for those far before COVID. So we're going to continue those parklets. Um, also, we have a food truck program that we're now going to continue heretofore. We're going to streamline it even more. We find, again, that idea that Puyallup is the greeting place, the meeting place. People like to have that variety of food. And so the more that's there, the more people will come there and everyone will go ahead and benefit from that. Also, you may have noticed this in our downtown area. There are daffodils on the sidewalks. You probably didn't even know that. There are daffodils on the streets. You probably didn't even know that. They have been really grown over for years. They've been neglected. And now the city is coming back and we are, you know, power washing those off. We're painting the sidewalks. We want to make it a vibrant area for people to come to. And I think all of this is paying off. And by the way, that's what you see 
What you don't see behind the scenes is we're improving our permit process. We invested $700,000 in a new electronic permit process in Puyallup with a goal of reducing permit times by 48%. Now, when I was first elected, I am not making this up. People said to me that they would not develop in Puyallup even if the property was given to them, okay? Now that's pretty bad, all right? There has really been a reversal in that. The master builders recently had a meeting, highlighted Puyallup and Pierce County for its good streamlining of the permit process. Um, and the results are paying off. Yesterday, we just signed a deal in Puyallup and I think I have a picture here somewhere. Here it is. We are going to, I don't know if you can all see that, but it's a five-story condominium project that the same builder that does Rustin Way along there with that very high quality development, we just signed a deal yesterday that this will go in next to our library. And uh, it's actually on the, it would be on the west side there of, of where the library is. And, and I believe this is just the beginning of the downtown revitalization. Uh, I think you'll see the Cornforth property. I, I Yesterday I saw what the Meeker Mansion has in store. And if you haven't seen that, boy, it'll blow you away. I mean, I like high expectations, but these are really high expectations. So I think that the downtown area, we want it to be more vibrant, Partly, I think the more people we get down there, obviously the more the businesses will thrive, but the safer it will become. The people who advocate for the most safety in probably that downtown area are the residents of those condominiums. Once they have ownership in that downtown area, they really, it, it's part of theirs. And we are advocating for ownership very much so in downtown Puyallup. They can be micro condos, they can be whatever the case may be, but we would like people to actually own a piece of the rock, so to speak, and own that downtown area. So we'll be advocating for far more of that. And, and while I'm on this subject, before I move to the one of public safety, um, we did negotiate with Sound Transit so that that big parking structure that they're building, which, by the way, I think is going to be fairly attractive. I mean, as far as parking structures go, it's going to be fairly attractive. It'll have brick. It'll also go back to the kind of the uh, more agriculture, the way they designed the exterior. But anyway, we negotiated with Sound Transit that on weekends and after five, we can use that parking. So you can imagine big weekend events that we have in downtown Puyallup, 500 parking places there. There will be plenty of parking for those kinds of events, and we were able to negotiate that. So anyway, um, and so I, I'd love to take more questions on that when we get to the question and answer, but I'd like to now talk about a safe community, which is, of course, very important. Um, as many of you probably know, Puyallup has a has a fairly high property crime rate, okay? You know, we have the shopping mall in the South Hill, which is responsible for a lot of that uh, property crime. Uh, you know, thefts from the store, Walmart, the, the shopping mall, et cetera. When it comes to the violent crime rate, we tend to be fairly low. In fact, we rank probably in the lower communities in that area in the entire Pierce County. Now, there is real concern, though. You, you've heard that the violent crime rate is now increasing at a rate not seen in decades. And that is of concern in many communities. We just had, you know, an uh, off-duty officer from another uh, jurisdiction shot the other day in Puyallup. And these are concerns that we have. And I, I think we, we really need to, to, to be cognizant of, of some of the, uh, the causes of that. Like, for example, I really believe that the legislature this last session really came forward with some misguided proposals when it came to criminal justice reform, made it very difficult to pursue an individual when they've committed a crime or you suspect them of giving, uh, committing a crime, made it uh, almost impossible for police to pursue in many cases where they would have otherwise um, where they would have otherwise pursued. Um, 
Also, drug crimes made it more difficult for us to intervene in drug crimes. So all of those things will add up. And then, of course, COVID made it tough because we couldn't incarcerate people as easily as we would otherwise, just because of the, the space associated with that. So we, have, we definitely have our challenges. And I'd like to talk a little bit more later on about Eastern Pierce County coming together because I'm looking at Tacoma and I think they have the highest shooting spree since 19, early 1970s right now taking place there. There isn't a day, it seems, that goes by that you don't hear about shootings there. And I was in a meeting with Tacoma residents the other day. I was invited to speak there. And they tell me that every night they hear gunshots throughout the night. Can you imagine living in a community like that? But, but that is how it is now. It wasn't that way a year ago or so. So Puyallup has kind of taken a different tack. We've been extremely supportive of our police while other communities were talking about defunding police. We took the opposite. We actually hired 10 new police officers in the last two years. We also went ahead and we moved our pay up so that we were at or near the top of cities in our class, okay? As far as the pay for the officers. Um, we also advocated for the public safety building, which is on the ballot coming up. We think that that added jail space, the updated facilities will enhance safety. And the people have responded in Puyallup. We have an 87% approval rate um, in our surveys of our police by our citizens in Puyallup. Um, so I, I, I think that we're going in the right direction on the safe community, but we definitely have our challenges. Um, I, I'm gonna skip through these other things so we can get on to questions, but the third goal area is livable community. Those of you who live in Puyallup may take it for granted at times, I hope you don't, but we have 18 parks for a city of only 43,000 people. That's kind of unheard of, a city our size. You know, we're only 14 square miles, that's all we are. 14 square miles, 43,000 uh, people. We have 18 parks. Think of De Courcy, Pioneer Park, Bradley Lake. We invest very heavily, um, a, a fair percentage of our budget in our parks. Some of the latest investments we've made, of course, is Daffodil Park at the base of Shaw Road, the old Van Laird Farm. We also have Astro Turf, the rec center over on the other side of the river. Uh, so that we can use those fields 365, 364 days a year, if we so choose. Um, so really expanding those options. We also just received a grant to renovate the rec center because it's had some, it been in disrepair. Our hope is to add a gym facility there, a tennis court. So we're always looking at adding those recreational facilities Again, that's kind of along the theme that we have where we really want a place where, you know, kids can thrive, families can thrive, and all of those parks are part of that entire equation. Um, and finally, the fourth area that we have in our goals is organizational uh, excellence. And I, I talked a little about what we do as far as strategic planning, the type of expertise we're bringing in, we're not at all afraid, and I want to make sure our management is of this sort, that um, of being audited, having a good performance audit come in and see where we stand. One thing we do often, City of Puyallup, we're on a regular basis is, you know, I told you we have Baldridge examiners, people who are probably the, some of the highest when it comes to organizational um, excellence, you know, working in our, in our city. Um, on about on a monthly basis, they collaborate with other cities who are also what we would call a bald ridge or that high level city. We routinely uh, collaborate with Walla Walla. Um, I believe Bellevue is in that mix. Kent, the uh, county of Spokane is also in that too, that mix. And, and the whole idea is this process of continuous improvement of us getting better and better when it comes to management. Um, and, I, and I really think we're, we're fulfilling those goals. So that's what we're doing as far as, you know, what we've been doing um, at, at the city around those four goal areas, strategic planning. I, I think that 
The future of Puyallup looks good from a revenue perspective, our downtown from an economic development perspective. Um, we do have those big challenges. We have crime. Uh, homelessness is also a very big issue. We currently have a hotel where we have 20 beds there. We also contract with the Salvation Army for another 14, for a total of 34. Keep in mind, no other city, no other city in Eastern Pierce County, Lakewood doesn't do this, Parkland, Spanaway, no other city in Eastern Pierce County puts as much money and resources into addressing this homeless issue than we do. It, does it say that, that we can't do more or that it's a complete uh, process? We're, we're thinking of new ways on how to address this issue. We have a full-time resource officer within our police department that does nothing but try to connect people to services. And the city itself contributes probably about $375,000 a year to the county to also address homeless issues through the document recording fees, which we've been giving now since 2005. So um, again, I, I, I want to say for questions, I know it's been kind of long-winded, but I, I really um, uh, am glad to give you this update and look forward to any questions you might have. Thanks. Gosh, what an incredible advocate you are for Puyallup. And I have three meeting points that I need to circle back and bring you into the chamber. I'm very excited to hear. Um, hey, great. Talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that, but I'm going to open it up to some questions for anyone that's on the line. And I know you were thorough. <laughs> By the way, I will gladly speak on all of these issues in more detail. I mean, there's there's definitely more detail in them. Um, so anyway. Yeah, I'll say, you know, we've got our um, economic development committee that is not only eager, um, but we have, there's a lot of what you said that it sounds like you're a great person that we'd love to pull into our next meeting if you're available. Um, we're, we're just as motivated and, and also see bright skies ahead, but not without, like you said, that execution part. Lots of ideas on paper and, and we're making headway. Good. Um, definitely collaborate great with Meredith Neal. Um, we've met with Jeff Wilson and his team to understand this new permitting process. And we're trying to roll that information out to the community so that they're not so fearful of trying to do business in Puyallup. So, I mean, we're swinging at it right behind you, but it sounds like you've got some nuggets that I need to grab onto for sure. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Yep, you bet. And um, yeah, any anyone else? Sh oh. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Yes. I actually have a question for Councilmember Castama. Any yep. predictions on um, the new public safety building? Like whether there's approval for that new the new public safety building that you are striving for, or that the city is has in front well, of them. It, it came out. Yeah, you have to understand that when we first addressed that, it was 120 million dollars. And the council went at it time and time again over about a three-year process. And we we basically reduced that down to 82 million. So, and you know, I, I've been in government long enough to understand that oftentimes a strategy is people put it out a very high number, then it fails, and then they come back with a low number. We didn't do that. I mean, we really tried to be very straightforward. And so we whittled it down initially to that 82. Our polls show it's close, okay? I'm just going, going to say, they show it's very close. Um, my hope is that with the understanding of support that people have in the community for police and that their statements that they really believe this will enhance police um, protection in our community, that it will go over that. I tend to be pretty optimistic on it, to, be, to tell you the truth. I, I think that um, given all the tenor that's going on locally with crime, for example, that people really see the necessity in having these facilities. And I hope they see also, and this is somewhat controversial. I mean, you would know this, and I'm sure everybody does. We have a jail component of this. Um, but I, back in the 1960s, we built a jail for 26. We're routinely at more than twice that right now. We're adding, we're going to 80. And that's going to last us for the next 30, 40 years. Why I think it's important that we have our own facility 
is because booking requirements are changing elsewhere all the time. Puyallup believes in the kind of common sense that misdemeanors will lead to felonies. That, you know, this, the minor crimes, they do move up the ladder. And if you have other standards out there that say don't incarcerate anybody with misdemeanor, or they have other standards that, that aren't really, you know, prone to safety in our community, um, I don't think that's healthy. I think we need to have our own facility and have our own requirements and have that ability to say, you know, uh, this person, um, you know, they're, they attempted to steal something or they stole it, we caught them, they should go and they should serve time in our, in our jail. We need that kind of, um, uh, how would you say, just discretion. So I hope the community sees that and votes for it. And I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I agree, Ryan. Thank you, Councilmember Kostama, for the presentation. Uh, I love the way you can go through the strategic plan and talk about the four major components and articulate that so well. I had um, just a question on the economic vitality side of things. Uh, you did show us all the plans from yesteryear that uh, the downtown has gone through. Are there any future plans for the downtown coming up? Oh, we, we have an entire economic development strategy for the downtown. And it's, it's you can find it online, I, but I will make it available to everybody there. In fact, that is a great point, Ryan. What I will do is um, we actually paid, I, I was very pleased with the economic development strategy that came out. We paid Burke and Associates to come in and do it. And I was a little weary to be very honest with you, but I thought it was actually very good. Um, I will get a copy and I'll give it to the chamber and then you can go ahead and hold on to that and hold us accountable for it. And then Ryan also with the city of Sumner, you know, I'm a big believer in if you see something out there that you like, you can go ahead, those components that you like copy, just, just, you know, plagiarism is kind of the, the ultimate flattery, I guess. I know you're going to buy, modify them for Sumner, but feel free to look at our economic dis development strategy. Take from us what you desire. And, uh, you know, and if there's anything we can do to collaborate to, I really believe that's important, especially for Eastern Pierce County. The more the government start collaborating with each other, uh, because a lot of these policies are going to be very Tacoma centric, and they're really not going to be based on a lot of us who have former agricultural communities were designed differently. We don't have big tide flats, big separate areas, neighborhoods that are sequestered from, you know, commercial areas. We're all in there together, a mix. And, and, I, and I think we have a very unique environment. So I, I'll make that available. And, um, and you hold me accountable. I don't want it to get in that pile next to me, okay? So thanks. Yeah, I, um, I kind of miss the being in person because I think that was what I was most proud about was the organic sort of collaboration that was happening between the two municipalities. And so yeah. here we'll get that going again. I think we have a copy of the economic development report on our website as well. Okay. Um, we're a part of that. I know Meredith Neal pulls us in at every turn and we're really also happy to be collaborating with you on the branding that's happening now. Yes. Um, we're looking at how does Puyallup want to be known um, we're also uh, working with the magazine Livability, and it sounds like you've got a lot of data that if we are getting ready to broadcast ourselves to the world, because Livability now takes a magazine from something on a shelf to online um, and, and telling our story the right way, just that 18 parks was something I hadn't put in context. And I think, again, you just have those right bullets that, that are important to message. So you've just opened yourself up to um, me being in front of you quite a bit in, in your near future. <laughs> well, this here is also a good document. We've committed in Puyallup to every two years, we're going to survey our constituents. And we're going to, I mean, this is a great report. I'll get it to you too. Okay. It goes through and it surveys you know, uh, the um, resident satisfaction or customer side, we call it customer satisfaction, or customer satisfaction levels in Puyallup. And then what we do is we compare them to benchmarks with the best of what other communities are doing out there. Um, you know, when, when you do these types of surveys, it's not good just to do them one time because you've got to compare them over periods. We've committed to every two years, we will do a survey with the same questions. We're going to see where we're improving 
and where we're falling off. We're going to use where we're out of line with other benchmarked, those communities are doing very well. We're going to put a renewed focus on those areas to get our numbers up. Um, and we, we think it's very accurate. A city that does this very well, who we're kind of copying from is Bellevue. Bellevue does an extensive survey. When you walk into their city hall, they've got a big, huge chart on the wall that shows their latest surveys. It shows what the satisfaction level for public services, people, the livability, et cetera, it's all right there. We want that in Puyallup, but this was the first one we put out and uh, I can make it available, but it goes through and just ask people all these questions about, do they like the way they, are they comfortable in Puyallup? Do they feel safe? What are their priorities? Um, how are our public services being delivered? The utilities, the whole nine yards, roads, very extensive. And this is what we're paying attention to. Because again, those best practices from the private sector, they pay attention to these things. The only way you pay attention in government is you have to have leaders who say they're important. Otherwise, you know, there's not much competition where we're at. So we, you know, that's why we're striving for excellence. I love it. It looks like we've got a question from Hannah Thomas. Um, she owns New Canvas Advising, a consulting firm, and she's asking um, if the results are made publicly available and if so, where can they be found? Uh, just contact me. I'll get them to them. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I will get that. And I, you know, Tara, I'll get them to you too. I appreciate so people that. can contact you. I'll send it to you. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. What a, I'm just blown away. And I think we're very fortunate to have you. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, so we are going to move over to our sister city next to us in Sumner, uh, Ms. Charlene Newman, Councilwoman Newman. Thank you for, at such short notice, joining us today. But we kind of, on the flip side, wanted to hear a little bit of a recap with uh, Sumner and your first year on council, and I guess just some projections of things uh, to look forward into the future. So go for it. Thank you for the opportunity. Also, um I will encourage uh, Ryan Windish and uh, Deputy Mayor Kathy Hayden to, um, to chime in. We have a tough act to follow with Councilmember Um And I also wanna thank Ryan for some of the information about the projects that I'll get to in just a little bit. Before we talk about them, I think it's really um, important for people to know the dynamics in um, unique dynamics of Sumner where we have over 10,000 people who live here, but more than 17,000 people who work here. The Southern part is really our neighborhood residential where like most of our residents live. And then, and I think Sumner should be incredibly proud to be one of only, have one of only three manufacturing industrial centers in Pierce County. And so a lot of our um, our large economic activity then happens to happens to the north. There are a lot of benefits, but also some challenges uh, that come with that. But um, I am extremely proud uh, that we do have MIC. Uh, the, in that manufacturing industrial center area, well, we now have um, Nordstrom Rack Distribution Center going in there. It already is home to REI distribution, um, all of your McDonald's hamburgers come from there and um, lots of other like food production sources as well. Anyway, it's a, it's a very healthy thing. It does pose some traffic problems with people with affordable housing to the south and people getting to the jobs in the north. But those are issues that we're working on and I'll get into in a little bit. And then sorry, as you can hear the train going by uh, behind me. So uh it was, so those dynamics um, create some interesting challenges, but a lot of opportunities. With that, we have some, I would say, exciting projects going on, and we're going to have continued, continued growth, which is required everywhere, and that's just a reality. But I really appreciate how the city of Sumner is trying to manage that. One of the new developments that we have going in are what's going to be called the Kincaid Apartments. Um, and it's really actually a beautiful building. 
And I think it's very smart planning because it'll be one of our, actually Ryan might be maybe the, probably the largest apartment complex um, multi-housing units going in that we probably will have in Sumner. And the beautiful thing about it is it's right next to the train station and the downtown restaurants. And so it makes a lot of sense. It will be, if they work outside of Sumner, it will be kind of like easy coming and going without having too much impact on any of the other parts. Um, and so right next to the freeway, it just makes a lot of sense where it is. Um, and it finally gets rid of what used to be um, an old eyesore with that. If you, for those of you who've been around for a long time, if you remember the old red apple in Sumner, um, and it helped us clear up. We got rid of some contamination issues and whatnot. I really think it's going to be a great um, development. And it's also right across from City Hall. So maybe we'll get a lot of people involved in government too. Um, we have uh, a number, I don't want to say a number of projects like that. Um, I will go back to the MIC. One thing that's been really great about the MIC is it has um, really allowed us to improve and increase our economic diversity. And by that, I mean our top contributors in terms of it's in terms of what can go into our general fund. So basically like where our sales taxes come from. Uh, it always makes me nervous when a city like over relies on just like a handful of areas. Cause if one area crashes, it can really cause um, some problems, you know, in terms of budget and, you know, and what we're able to do if you don't have that economic diversity. And over the years, like Ryan has done a great job in constantly like, like recruiting different types of businesses. And me being on the finance committee, you can you actually start to see how that plays out. Um, and so having that kind of economic diversity is very healthy. It reassures me that we're headed in the right direction, especially um, for like a smaller size town. Um, one thing that I'm extremely excited about, and I think really everyone should be like, whether you live here or not, I think, um, I have to credit Ryan to this. So the last year, mostly Ryan and yes, sometimes council has been working with UW Tacoma planning department and, with their planning students. And so they actually, this is where I kind of want Ryan to chime in to explain the process and how that all got started. But it has led to some beautiful visions and really healthy discussion and really opened not just the creative vision doors for what we can do downtown, but also starting to have the conversations about putting dollars to, that, to those visions and mapping out a timeline and a plan, like once we had consensus about which pieces, you know, because sometimes there were idealistic students, um, you know, like who haven't, haven't been jaded by reality yet, um, but we were able to pick and choose pieces that make sense. And I think it is really going to open up downtown Main Street. Uh, in beautiful ways where you're going to have better access to our public events and parks with pedestrian traffic on main street. Uh, it looks beautiful. It improves access. It makes it a more desirable place. Like we already have a very quaint, charming and desirable downtown, but I think it just does wonders and trying, trying to draw more people in. Um, we also part of that, economic diversity has also helped council be able to fund road improvements that we otherwise would not have been able to afford to do. For instance, on Wood and Main, you're going to see uh, a huge difference in not only like not only the improvements in use and access for that critical what is it, arterial area and intersection on, on Main Street, but also make it a beautiful intersection that like that you can enjoy that you want to see like while you're using it. Um, so it works for both foot and, and road traffic. 
And that road traffic, we'll go back to that real quick before I have Ryan jump back in and talk about that UW Tacoma process. Um, but that traffic is important because Sumner has been very successful. Like it, for those of you who don't come here often, there are really, to the south of Sumner, there are really three key access points to getting in and out of Sumner. And, and all three of those are significant intersection and interchanges off of 410. And that had like having improvements or not having improvements make all the difference in the world in terms of functionality and access to Sumner, uh, both coming and going. We have been fortunately very successful in like with the help of sound transit in getting um, state and private partnership funding for, for traffic, uh, for the traffic Avenue, traffic and main work, where if you go off, you can either go to the South to Puyallup or to the North to Sumner. And that the inter the improvements on that interchange has made a tremendous difference in having, be able to have some of the workers both the workers and the residents and the semis to be able to flow to where they need to go. We now need to work, we're now working on both 162 and 166, and we've had pretty good success so far in getting state help there too. And so I think we're gonna start to see, once we see improvements there, we'll have hopefully, knock on wood, less impact from Mick on our residents. And so really trying to balance, like both the residential area serves our community very well and so does Mick. And it's just trying to just find the right balance in making them both function for the two very different needs, I would say. And then I'm probably leaving out and forgetting some things, uh, but I would, but I do think it would be great if Brian can brag a little bit about his UW Tacoma uh, efforts with their planning department. Sorry to put you on the spot, Ryan. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Newman. Uh, always, always like to talk about collaborating with University of Washington Tacoma, and I also know that Meredith Neal has been working with uh, their business, some of their business students, on some things that she's doing. So it's it's an invaluable regional resource to be able to tap into. Uh, UW Tacoma. And yeah, we partnered with the Urban Design Studio class. And last year, all last year was a full academic year, all three quarters, uh, working through kind of existing conditions downtown, and then a design aspect to it. And then finally, focusing on three areas that came out of the, the Main Street Visioning Plan, uh, looking at our Pioneer Heritage Park in the downtown. Uh, and how do we enhance that? How do we change it? How do we make it better for community events? And then activating our alley spaces. So if uh, you've been um, post alley up in Seattle, might be a, a, an elaborate example of that. But how do you how do you activate these spaces and make them areas that can be open for events? So you don't have to close your main street. If you have a smaller food truck event or a sales event in these alleyways, it could be much more friendly and and creative and, and whimsical. And then the last thing that they looked at was the Main Street corridor itself. You know, what, what could we do to improve this, uh, this corridor? And those uh, three elements are the key parts of the plan. And I think the most exciting thing right now is we actually have a water line, storm line utility project on Kincaid Avenue, which will be right next to the park. And we're kind of expanding that whole project to really build that element of the plan out in terms of the streetscape. And what we're designing is called a Wooner. Uh, it's a pedestrian oriented street that has like zero curbs. And then you, you create a texture on the concrete that makes it feel more, much more like a plaza. You can still have cars in there, but it'll be much more event-like uh, when you close down the street for an event. And it's also just a much more walkable and pleasant area. So we are moving forward with those designs, which I think is incredibly exciting to do what we call the visioning plan. And then by next summer, we'll actually be building uh, brick and mortar parts of this plan into place. So uh, not collecting dust on the shelf, as uh, Councilmember Castman was saying about some of the plans downtown. Beautiful vision, but can we get it built? And that was, the, that was one of the key objectives of this plan. Thank you for letting me share that, uh, Councilmember Newman. 
it was really exciting work. It, it was like, it was great whenever this every quarter when the students would update with their visions and council members to have a chance to respond and um, in ways that like it forces us to think about all of the opportunities and potential that I think like without this process, we would not have been able to come together in the same way um, and also create that kind of excitement uh, and funding mechanisms for it had it not been that interactive, I think, process and stuff. So um, very excited about, about that piece of it. And I don't know if people have questions or want me to talk about other areas. I mean, we can talk about public safety and whatnot, although I think we're, we're reasonably, uh, for, like we have seen an increase in, with some, some issues, mostly like vandalism type things, but I think we are, for the most part, knock on wood, uh, very fortunate. Um, and we have a great chief of police uh, who's doing a good job in getting our uh, our police officers to very like soon we will start seeing like body cams, which I think most of them feel like will actually help like if there are any um, I would say issues of conflict or challenges, I think it actually gives them an opportunity to show how well they do uh, in um, in their responses to calls. And so, um, and it's a good, you know, accountability tool. And so anyway, we'll see, we'll see that coming. Um, but not going to, we have a great um, police department. Our parks are doing um, really well. I think that helps improve quality of life for people living here. Um, given us options and we've started uh, doing experimenting with rotating um, kind of pop-up dog parks uh, I think which people have enjoyed um, it makes it more fun to be out and about in Sumner any questions yeah any questions gosh I sure love being a part of both of these communities just great staff and motivated council and the right folks in, in the public seats as well. So kudos to you all. I see Sean Egan, our friend from the port. Yes, sir. Good morning, councilwoman. Um, this is more of a comment um, as opposed to a question. I just wanted to say, I think the city of Sumner has found a really nice balance between maintaining that sort of livable, cute, charming sort of neighborhood vibe associated with downtown and the residential areas, as well as industry. And in particular, we wanted at the port to both say thank you and to compliment you about your prioritization about making sure to invest into your freight routes. Um, we understand that if you're going to have a, a manufacturing industrial center, you've got to have that infrastructure there. And the city of Sumner has done a great job in terms of looking for how to make sure those freight corridors function in an effective way. Um, we've been able to partner on a small scale on a couple of those projects, but really at the end of, uh, of the day, it's dependent upon the leadership of the city. So thank you to you and your colleagues and staff as well for that effort there. Well, thank you. I know you guys have been tremendously, the Port of Tacoma has been tremendously helpful in supporting a lot of those grant applications and sometimes coming in as a funding partner as well. And that is certainly goes a long way in creating that balance between having a manufacturing industrial center, you know, to the north and try and make it as least disruptive as possible with their traffic. And so I, I'm very proud that Sumner has been able to maintain, uh, I think, you know, equal balance um, between the two and make both of them sort of separate healthy functions um, that really drives so much of the city. But the Port of Tacoma, as you know, like has been um, tremendously helpful. And for those of you who don't know, even um, the Manufacturing Industrial Center in Sumner even uh, won a planning a Vision 2040 award from the Puget, uh, Puget Sound Regional Council and stuff. So Port of Tacoma has been a great partner. Awesome. Well, uh, I'll stick in Sumner here. So Ryan, if there was anything else uh, that needed to be added, please feel free to Add. I, I see we've trimmed a few whiskers. Yes. <laughs> My wife got me in a headlock. 
Um, I don't know if there's anything of real importance that we haven't already touched on that the uh, only thing I want to speak about real briefly is we are moving forward on implementing our, our housing affordability action plan and received a grant from Commerce for $75,000 for implementation. And our first order of business is to take a look at incentivizing and, and making it easier to do senior housing in Sumner. Uh, that's been a huge demand for years and a council priority. So we are moving to our planning commission for an initial discussion this Thursday. And we've been reaching out to senior housing developers and, uh, and apartment type developers to make sure that the regulations we put in place are something that's going to be workable and, and actually be an incentive. So that's one of the things I did want to, to put out there. Other than that, I will uh, so surrender the floor to somebody else. Thank you, Kara. Yeah. Right. Can I just add one thing onto that for, cause in case there might be people on the call who, um, who don't know yet, but there is now very unique collaboration amongst many of the cities in Pierce County. It is called the, um, the South Sound Housing Affordability Partnership. It, uh, and both Puyallup and Sumner are participating in that. And one of the encouraging things about it is to have kind of this balanced collaborate, like collaborative effort to really tackle what is such a huge issue but what's been nice so far about those meetings is that there is also a lot of respect for the differences in, in how like small and larger cities might tackle those. So it is not going to be a cookie cutter or where like Tacoma perhaps is going to usurp all the authority and do all of the advocating and imposing like the solutions that will work in Tacoma there's recognition that it may not like be proportionally appropriate for Sumner and Puyallup, um, but we are all learning off of one another. And so, um, anyway, to and Ryan has already, I would say, gotten us further along along some like healthy roads um, on some of our issues, like while that's starting to kick off. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, Jeff, I wanted to just ask you really quick as you got your back to me. Sorry. <laughs> Council member Kastamer did a phenomenal job with his presentation at a certain angle, but I'm always, you know, appreciative of you and Meredith joining us with any updates in your area. I, I appreciate it and uh, apologize for being a little bit late to the call. I got stuck in a little bit of traffic getting in. So um, actually, I was reading a text from Meredith going, can you join on the call today? Because I can't make it. So I'm on, I'm on traffic. Um, I know Councilmember Katzma did a great job uh, explaining what's happening in our community, especially in the downtown effort. And I know he's a big advocate of, of a lot of positive things in the community. I think probably the, the couple of biggest things were, were, were worked on the rollout of the, um, I think we've talked about it again, but we're getting very close now on the rollout for our City View project. We're going to do a brief presentation to the council next week to kind of give them a lay of the land of how that rollout will occur between basically over the first couple of weeks of December as we make that transition transition from our present method to the, to the new system. Um, we're also going to be making a presentation. I believe it's going to be at the council meeting in December, talking about the planning work program for 2022. So we're taking a look at those things that we'll be working on as part of the 2022 effort um, on, the, on the higher level items, whether it's the city issues related to the comprehensive plan or uh, there are several code amendments we're going to be trying to work on in some of our efforts to do some streamlining of our processes and simplifications um, and some other things that we'll be bringing forward as part of the work plan for 2022 and really building towards starting to work on our major comp plan update in the year 2024. So we're going to start to begin that work in 2022. And a lot of, you know, we've got a lot of major projects going on. Um, I think people probably have seen, but uh, the former West Coast um, cold storage that burned down is completely down, demolished. The, the new owners of the property actually have come in for a pre-app on the property for, to redevelop that site. So they're very anxious to be moving forward on the redevelopment of that site. Um, and probably the other big item, we're spending a lot of staff time, a lot of effort right now as we're getting close towards release of the 
the draft environmental impact statement on the Knutson Farms project, uh, the major uh, warehousing project um, down by uh, the old Knutson, Knutson Farms property next to Bingora Park. Um, we're working on the timing of that when it's going to be occurring, but we're, we're gathering all the data right now. So a document will be released uh, sometime in the next one to two months on the draft for public review and comment on it. So we're working out the timing logistics of that. So really encourage people to, you know, watch for that and participate and review it. Uh, we're going to be end up having a public open house, probably a hybrid type of meeting. So we'll look for a lot of public feedback and comment on the draft as it goes out and responding to the issues you know, related to a, a project of that magnitude and size. Great. Thorough. Right. Appreciate it. No, you're welcome. All right. Tara, Tara, if I could make one last comment, and this is what's kind of inspired the Kelp City Council, is that a lot of people don't want to change. They want to stay the way we were. Now, I grew up in Puel. I still live in the same house I grew up in. I mean, I've been in the same house 61 years. Can you believe that? Yeah. Anyway, so a lot of people don't want to make the change uh, from where we are now to where really is going to happen in the future with greater population. We've identified the characteristics, safe community, family focused. And the theme has been either we define our future or someone else will do it for us. So we're very, um, we're very involved in everything from the design, the architectural elements, all of that in the downtown core and the entire city of Puyallup. Because realize, we realize if we don't take control of our destiny, someone else will, and it will be someone from the outside who doesn't care as much as the people in the community uh, here in Puyallup do, and as some nerd do. So just, just a word of wisdom there. I like the word of wisdom, amen on that one, very nice. All right, County Councilman Zeiger, I so appreciate you logging on. I know we spent a lot of time in our cities today, but I'm sure you've got a few things brewing in the county. Council Member Zeiger. Oh, I think we're Sorry having... about that. Okay, so uh, we're in the middle of budget season right now. And um, we are uh, uh, going to wrap that up uh, in a couple of weeks. Today is a council meeting, and we're going to be making an appointment to uh, the 27th Legislative District State Senate seat. So that's going to be uh, an interesting and important process uh, for, for the Tacoma area. Um, we, uh, so, so just a few highlights of uh, some things we're talking about related to the budget that uh, that folks are going to want to be tracking. One has to do with homelessness. Uh, we have some big opportunities to, to address homelessness. The county is doing some comprehensive planning around homelessness, and we want a lot of people engaged in that discussion. Uh, we want to make sure that we are aligning what we're doing at the county with what the various cities are doing around homelessness, and, uh, but, but also doing some things differently than, than we have been doing. Um, one of the major items in the uh, the county executive's proposal to the council uh, is to do a th to spend $30 million on uh, the purchase of land for a community first village uh, modeled after uh, what Austin, Texas has done. They have been highly effective in uh, addressing, um, addressing homelessness with it. Gosh, I've been so focused on our districts in Puyallup. I feel a little remiss that I didn't know in my own district 27 something's happening with an appointment. I'm anxious to hear about that. Charla knows, it sounds like. Hmm. I would have thrown my hat in in the ring on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we shall see him again, but um, I'm blessed to have uh, Carmen Goers with us. Uh, speaking on behalf of the South Sound Chamber of Commerce Legislative Coalition, we kind of heat up and really start to focus on our issues uh, to work with our legislators as the session's just around the corner. So Carmen has some updates with that. Yes, I'll try to be really brief. One, please save the date for Thursday, December 9th, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. That is our coalition breakfast, uh, legislative breakfast discussion. It will be on Zoom again this year. Uh, we will be presenting our 2022 regional legislative priorities. 
as well as having discussion um, topics on long-term care, housing, and police reform, and working on those speakers and um, at this point in time. Uh, also looking for support with uh, sponsorships, as this is the coalition's only um, annual fundraiser to help support the region. Oh, uh, Hans is council member uh, is back. I'll let you finish. keep keep going. I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, okay, okay. And um, we are hoping that uh, PL Sumner has the opportunity to review the proposed legislative priority changes. Um, we are hoping to get those back in by the fifteenth, just after the holiday, that we can confirm those and move forward. Um, and there's pretty much um, not many things have changed. We've expanded a little bit to add some um, uh, discussions on uh, budget and taxes, um, housing affordability. There's been some expansion. And then uh, police, local police reform is also an area that we're trying to you know, figure out some verbiage on. So uh, looking forward to hearing back from the, the chamber on their responses. Great, and now you said Thursday, but, is, but I, you give a Tuesday date, or I, I guess I'm just, can you play? I thought it was December 9th. Is that not the right date? Oh, no, nope, that's perfect. I thought you said okay. And, and I, oh. I'm really clarifying that because on, de, on December 7th, which is our next GAC meeting, um, we are kind of flipping this GAC meeting and doing our own legislative breakfast in person at Puyallup Nissan, Quorum Nissan. They're going to open up their showroom. And so we do have um, county council member and some of our state legislators that will be there to talk about some of the issues important to them. And then obviously for us stakeholders to weigh in on what issues we hope get attention as well. So, so two important breakfasts that week, for sure. We're looking to feed you and keep you healthy in 2022. Yes, we are, we are, we are. Thank you for that time. Absolutely. And then council member Zeiger, I know we got interrupted there. Sorry about that. So uh, I, I was in the middle of talking about the community first village model and uh, Hope we have future opportunities to talk more about that, but I uh, just wanted to put that on your radar as a major opportunity, I think, to do something regionally. Um, uh, I, I would expect that would occur in the unincorporated part of Pierce County. Um, also law enforcement, making sure that we, uh, we fund our sheriff's department in our county budget, make sure that we are um, uh, making the most of uh, the federal dollars that we are receiving. Uh, both Puyallup and Sumner have asked for money for water infrastructure. And uh, so I'm hoping that we can put together a robust um, a grant fund for both water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, there's a lot of needs throughout the county. Um, lots we could talk about. I'll just mention uh, Canyon Road. We need to do some coalition building around that. That's, that's not the first time that, that topic has come up uh, on this call, but um, there, there has arisen some level of controversy as we get into the six year transportation plan for the county over that project. And I think we need to do some, uh, some coalition building to remind people throughout the county of the economic development significance of that project, uh, the importance of replacing um, the uh, Milroy Bridge from you know, River Road over into Fife basically would, would be a connection with, I mean, Canyon Road would connect over to 70th, uh, linking up the Tide Flats to the uh, Fredrickson Manufacturing and Industrial Center. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is that we're in the middle of redistricting right now for the county. Uh, the county council has designated uh, redistricting commissioners to do that work. And so uh, would encourage folks to be engaged in that process as they are uh, redrawing the, the district lines for county council districts. Thank you. Great. I need to circle back with a meeting with you as well. So I will reach out. Sounds good. Any questions? It uh, looks like Sean has a question. Good morning, Councilman. Um, going back morning, to Sean. Canyon Road, um, I, I, just a little bit of clarity on that. Um, I understand that there are, you know, some council members who may not be fans of the project, um, but I think some of us are a little confused about sort of the motion that came out of the EID committee, kicking it up to the full council, I've heard conflicting reports about whether or not this is an effort to um, either defund the project, cancel the project, whatever, or it's, or it, I've also heard reports that this is more of a debate over how to fund the project, whether to do on a pay as you go basis slash debt financing. And I was hoping you could elaborate as to kind of what is the question that is being posed 
to the full council? Yeah, I, I'm not sure we fully know the answer to that yet, because uh, depending on which council member you talk to, they have they, they may have a little different perspective on that. Um, what I'm gathering from my colleague, Ryan Mello, is that he would like to push more in the direction of more more bonding for transportation projects in the county. And um, and I think that's a fair conversation to have. Uh, we, we, we are far from uh, using up our county's debt capacity right now. Um, but where I hear some real skepticism about the project itself is from uh, Chair Young. And, um, and that's where I think we need to really make sure that we, we are defending the project, making the case for it, all the economic benefits associated with it, as well as some environmental pro uh, benefits, trail completion uh, connections. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is an example where I mean, you and I, um, you know, have uh, a lot of experience with the 167 coalition building process. And uh, um, I think we could learn some lessons from that project and apply those to the Canyon Road project. Um, I just think that we need to get uh, some community leaders, community organizations together who support this project and, and uh, be a little bit more vocal about that. Yep. Count us in and I'll, I'll wrangle a few myself. Thank you. All right. Well, hey, I know we ran over, but gosh, one of my favorite GAC meetings. It was fantastic. Really appreciate you being here. Councilman Castama, Councilwoman uh, Newman, and, and all of you stakeholders and great uh, people of our community. Uh, have a great rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you in person in December um, for the, again, Puyallup Nissan GAC. So it'll be a special one. All right. Thanks, everyone.